amazing Tokyo views all for free. But you can just visit this place for free. I've never seen that in any country around the world. Tokyo, a vibrant city that blends traditional culture with modern uniqueness. Tokyo has something to offer to everyone, no matter what your interest is. But I have the feeling I look like something else now. Do you know Playboy? There are endless activities to do, but most of them come with a price tag. Please don't feel forced to try it out here because it is just really, really expensive. Prepare to be amazed by all the free adventures waiting for you in Tokyo. Today we'll share with you how to explore Tokyo on a budget. And we start our day with this beautiful Hachiko. Gonna stand in the queue here? I'm doubting. It's the most uh, famous dock of the world. Or should we just cross the crossing? So this is it. The famous crossing. The Shibuya crossing. Shibuya crossing, it's such a special crossing that you can also meet some really famous people and we found our favorite YouTubers kinging it. Oh, it was just like a fanboy moment. Mira is just one of those hundred tourists doing this. I think there are more people who are just going back and forth with their camera than people who actually have to cross this crossing. have the best view from this crossing and of course you don't have that on street level you have that if you go up but that's a little bit of a search I know from this Starbucks you have a good view but there's a really long queue so I'm not sure if you can kind of skip the queue maybe just go up with the escalator see what happens there I think we found the best viewpoint where you can get the entire view of Shibuya crossing do you see something here it's just a bit dusty so actually we went to the first floor where there's the Starbucks seating, but it's a bit rude to stand there next to the people who actually have a drink. So Starbucks, yeah, but you do have to buy a drink. And we are on a budget, so we're not going to do that. We are going to find a different viewpoint. We are at the crossing again now, and now we go to a really tall building in front of us. And Mira says that from the 11th floor, we can get really nice views. So let's see. Oh, and look at this. Oh! That's the building, what I'm talking Oh. I just pointed to the building, but you know what is the rudest thing to do in Japan? To point at things, so you kind of like wave at things. So I'm gonna do it again. So that's, that's the <laughs> <There>. building. <laughs> that's where we're gonna go on the 11th floor. <laughs> it is actually very rude to point at things and point at people, like finger points. So don't do it when you're in Japan. But now the hardest part is to find the entrance of this building. I already got this as a tip from someone, uh, I think in a train or so. She said, oh, you go to Japan, be careful, you won't find any entrances. Or any exit. Or any exits. And yeah, she was true, she was right. There it is. Found it. Sky Lobby, it sounds like something you have to pay for, but uh, we'll see how far we get. Oh, the lift goes quite quick. Ooh. Ooh. Whoa, <laughs> did you see that lift? Oh, okay. It's promising. We're just gonna go as far as close to the edge until someone stops us. But if we don't see the crossing, no worries. We have a crazy view over Tokyo. I think from there you can see Mira. Yeah. Oh, no, I think, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it already looks so amazing. You see it, you do need a zoom lens if you want to make a nice food dish, but you do see it. And talking about Tokyo on a budget, many of these buildings you can enter for free and go to the top to have a really nice view. And this is the first one, but we are also going to more of them. <laughs> and of course, if you're on a budget in Japan, you eat a lot at 7-Eleven, Family Mart or Lawson. But there are also many places where you can eat for a budget at a restaurant. And this is one of them. This is a sushi place. And they say it's really cheap and delicious. So let's find out. We have been eating sushis from 7-Eleven for, for quite a while. So, so this would be our first proper sushi place. And we will actually judge if it's better than 7-Eleven. Oh, I think they greeted us already. Oh. Oh. Hi. Two. Plates yeah. are ranging from 130 to 500 yen, and I wasn't sure how it worked, but every plate has a different color. And for example, like the grayish plate is the cheapest. So if you just take gray plates, in the end, maybe don't pay that much. 
I have to figure out how that works. Press it. Press it, and then you have a tea bag here, which you can put in here. Here are chopsticks, here is ginger. So yeah, we had no clue. We were like, ooh, what's that? I eat these a lot from the 7-Eleven, and they're just as good. It's amazing. But yeah, the 7-Eleven is also really, really good. But we'll give you the final conclusion in the end. I think it was the cutest sushi place ever. As soon as you enter, everybody, all the staff, they're greeting you. As soon as you leave, all the staff, they're greeting you. So cute. And the sushi was delicious. What do you think, Vera? Yeah, should I say how much you paid? Oh no. 960 yen. That how is not is even. That? That's not, not even, even a 10 euro. No, not even 8 euros. Like. Six, six point something. We just ate for 3 euros per person. This amazing sushi. Yeah. And we ate like 7 8 plates. Yeah, I think there was something on the menu like you get some discount if you order before 1 30. And I think we did. But uh, yeah, the, oh, well. this is all Japanese, of course. But yeah, so visit this place. That sushi was so good. I still cannot believe that it was that cheap. Speaking of cheap, you might have noticed by now that we are keeping today's adventure super cheap. And you know what could be better than that? A budget-friendly Japan travel guide and a Google Maps, in which we share all our unique spots in Japan. During our time in Japan, we experienced the craziness in Tokyo, embraced ourselves in the beautiful nature during the Kumano Koro, lived with Japanese monks, and so much more. In our guide and Google Maps, We'll share everything about the hotels we stayed, where we have visited, and the delicious food we ate. Go to letsmeetabroad.com and order your Japan travel guide. After some nice sushi, we were a bit thirsty. So guess what we found? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, eight vending machines in a row. Just a normal day in Tokyo. So this one is all full of coffee. See, I'm not pointing. I'm doing my hands like this. Yo, this one looks nice. So I think we agreed on something. Yeah. Because there's like almost how many choices do you think there would be? Like at least 200? Oh, so many, so many. And it's all, yeah, just 150, 160, like all 130 around, gen. All it's around, all somewhere between one, one to two dollars or yeah. one to two euros. And you can pay with coins, but you can also pay with your cards. But we have these coins, so let's try that. Nice, right? So it is amazing that you can get all of these foods from the 7-Eleven or from the vending machines, but there are not a lot of places where you can sit here in Tokyo. But we found a place here on a rooftop, a little rooftop garden where you have the view over Shibaya and you can sit. Let's try the drinks, if yeah. they're also good. Until now, all the drinks what we have tried in Tokyo, in Japan, it's next level. And but yours looks like water. With a lot of sugar, but this one looks a bit less sugarous. Oh yeah. Oh, you will love, love this. Mine. No, you will love this more. Really? Yeah. Oh. Oh, mine is better. We have to take a photo of this. This is really good. It's not even that sweet. Should I show you? Then you know what to take. Amazing Tokyo views, all for free. If you are on this rooftop, you can also go to the Nintendo shop on the budget, otherwise I would buy everything in this show. That's the craziest part about being in Tokyo is that every corner, every corner you see stuff like this. You found a Pokeball. Yeah, gotta get you all. Oh, look at this, honey. Oh, I always wanted to be a princess once. I really love it that people also just wear it here if they love it. Like in Europe, you just, yeah, you can, of course, but people nah, yeah. would think you're a crazy. Yeah. So we thought we were going to some nice and chill area, but look where we ended up. In the most busiest street of Tokyo, I think. What's so special about this street? That we're gonna find out. <laughs> Gadgets, gadgets and a lot of souvenir stuff. Maybe that's why it's famous. Yeah. Oh, this is all for your dog, Adi. Here, you want to have a little backpack for your dog? Or a little, little, rom little clothes for your dog? Oh my god. 
So from the crazy street on that side, we went to the quietness and calmness on this side because here is a really big, beautiful forest, which we are going to explore. So this Yogi Park is free, of course, and it is in the center of Tokyo. How cool is that? And it's so nice and peaceful. So definitely come here. Today it closes at 5.50 so p.m. We have some time left. We have some time, but it's, uh, yeah, it's not for the evenings. I think that's a good thing. I don't know if that's a problem here in Japan. That's where people come in the evenings and places. So park is this beautiful shrine and oh, it's really like really peaceful so you can just take a seat somewhere and chill or you can just sit somewhere in the park beautiful is it the third biggest shrine yeah i think i heard it was the third biggest shrine of tokyo but i'm not sure if this is the only shrine here maybe there's also another one because i thought i saw a picture from a red one this is not red There's also a place here where you can write a note, like you know, you can write a wish and you can put it in an envelope and then you drop it somewhere. So Mira did it and she believes that all her wishes will come true. But I think they really will come true. <laughs> it must be if there's such a pretty envelope. Yeah. After a peaceful visit to the park, we headed back to the craziness of Tokyo in search for the highest free viewpoint in the city. We are going to our next viewpoint, but I think we have to go through this evening rush because it's really heavy over there. So we went to Shinjuku to go to the Tokyo government building because from this building you have a free view all over Tokyo. You go to the 45th floor and you have a panoramic view. It's amazing and all for free. So don't spend money on crazy towers here in Tokyo. We have been to many rooftops around the world and paid so much money to get a nice view but I think this is the best one ever. After some nice sightseeing, we are back in our favorite restaurant. The 7-Eleven. And the 7-Eleven has seatings. Like you can sit here and it's really, really rare. So we're going to show you a bit around what kind of food you can get here in a 7-Eleven. Nice. These are pancakes with maple syrup and margarine butter. We are vegetarians. It's always a gamble that you might have a nice vegetarian meal or no. What did you get, Mia? So I got some tofu salad and some soup. Of course, delicious, really. Everything until now what we got from 7-Eleven, and that's a lot because we eat here almost every day. Uh, it's delicious, it's really good. And I got some egg sandwich, some tofu bar, which is quite interesting, and some ramen. Yes, as Mira said, everything what we got is next level, and there's family marts, there's Lawson, there's so many convenience store which provides proper meals. So if you're on a budget, that is your best restaurant. Did you realize that today we just spent under $10 per person? Yes, you can definitely travel Japan on a budget. If you are keen to plan your own budget adventure in Japan, check out our travel guide. That's it for the video. We hope that you enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.